Flushes in spring, a pinkish haze. The raindrop slows up on toothy leaves. Cluster of fruit on a flat winged plate. Duff or dent, the boards won't split. Not for burning curls of gold. Even the very flames are cold. Scotland has 21 native trees, but if you think about just the larger native trees, there are 14. Which arm would have recolonised Scotland after the last ice age? And from the pollen record, we know that this took place around about 9,000 years ago. Which elms are sometimes called Scotch elm in Scotland? And this is because it's actually probably more abundant in, in the north of England and certainly in Scotland than it is in the lowlands of England. Uh, elm, the special character of elm is, uh, for better or for worse, is the wildness of its grain and the fantastic patterns that you get in the grain. If you get it right, the end results are spectacular. Which elm in Scotland is suffering from Dutch elm disease? and this has started in the south coast of England in the late 1960s and it's been spreading north ever since. The Botanic Gardens was fortunate in having a fabulous witch elm specimen that unfortunately got Dutch elm disease in 2003 and had to be felled. I mean for me it was a really sad thing to, to learn that the tree had been condemned. Um, I've been using this tree for years, with, particularly with school groups, and, and we'd, we'd, we'd gone to this tree as an example of, of a Scottish native tree, and the children had sort of joined arms and measured it. And to me, it was a very important tree, and I say a sad moment to learn that it had got the disease and it had to come down. I was really determined at that point, if at all possible, that it should live, and it, and it will live. Once this wood gets into the hands of skillful makers, then they will transform it. I'm going to be involved in a project with Came School to construct a wooden tree on which the achievements of the pupils from year to year could be displayed. Of course, the idea of the project also is to involve the kids as much as possible in the making process. Which elm flowers appear very early in the spring, in sort of February, and early March, and they're pink and quite inconspicuous. The, the witch elm is a, a wind-pollinated tree, so it doesn't invest um, lots of energy producing very flamboyant flowers to attract bees and other pollinating insects. Elm is actually a difficult wood to carve because it's got this interlocking grain. As I'm actually cutting down, you can actually feel the wood, it's just a sort of feedback. You, you go into little soft bits and then suddenly you've got a little hard bit. It's often the, the difference between the winter and the summer wood. So this design really is a reference to the witch elm, the, the material that which the chair is made from. And then the, the inscription here, a debt to trees as deep as roots. Because without trees, um, we would be pushed. Witch elms are wind dispersed, um, their seeds have a kind of uh, disc-like wing and the trees are, are well known for producing in most years very large quantities of seeds so you can almost get the impression that it's snowing witch elm seeds when they're, they're shedding their seeds in, in May. So, so this is the Aeolian harp. Um, of course, the conventional harps that are making with gut strings are being played by a harpist. Strings are being plucked. Whereas this is designed purely to respond to the wind blowing through the strings. Okay, this is the, uh, uh, the frame of, of the uh, Aeolian harp. Um, and this is actually made from the botanics, um, witch elm tree. And uh, thankfully, it's, it's a very special, nice-looking piece of, uh, of elm. Um, it isn't until I've actually finished this and put strings on that I will know exactly what it's going to sound like. 
Hope it works. Well, I think with the, with Spelm, um, there were these two pieces of wood, and I could see that there were enough lines to paint on it that this poem by Valerie Gillis about the witch elm. Well, I don't. Nobody knows what Spelm is. Is Spelm? Is it sperm? Is it spell? It's a kind of secret we don't quite understand. And I quite like the idea that when I was painting the lettering on this wood, you can't see it unless you tilt the piece of it. So it becomes a kind of secret message or a secret spell. Spellum, pollen cloud, pollen cloud, float free of twig and bough. Downy shoot, downy shoot, make your living from the root. Fruit wing, fruit wing, surf the waves of the wind. Tree gall, tree gall, cause a silver rain to fall. Elmber, Elmber, bud with nearly iron spur. Witch elm, witch elm, nothing will overwhelm. In areas where Dutch elm disease has um, been widespread, it's been noticed that there are a very small proportion of surviving trees and what we were interested in doing was to try and take some cuttings of these trees because it's possible that there was something special about these trees that was enabling them to survive. That We don't really know why it is that some trees survive and, and, and some don't. Um, there are a few ideas on how this might be going on and one of them is that it's possible that the trees are not proving attractive to the beetles because they're not emitting the right chemicals that attract the beetles to the trees. I'll do the first one and call on people to help me. Oh, Get this, this has been a, a fantastic communal effort. The making of yurts lend themselves to social events. We ran a course at New Battle Abbey and got some of the students involved and it took about uh, six weeks to, to go through all the processes of steam, steam bending we coppiced the wood from the local wood and I completed the, the construction of the door, the elm door, using the wood from the Royal Botanical Garden, uh, the elm tree that came down there. It's, it's a very social project and uh, has worked incredibly well. I'm very pleased with, with the end result. I mean, this chair is designed so it could last 500, 600 years a lot longer than the life cycle of the tree, which is really what true sustainability is, is about. My class was involved with the tree by screwing it onto the wall and putting it up and like making it so it fitted and we put our leaves on, which none of like, well, they were our own idea uh, from the top of our head and none of them are the same. I think they're very pleased. In Britain, certainly Scotland would be regarded as really the last bastion of witch elm. There are areas in the far north of Scotland and particularly on the west coast where there has never been Dutch elm disease and there are healthy populations of witch elm. And across Europe as a whole, there are relatively few areas now where there are completely untouched populations of witch elm. So Scotland would be one of Europe's last bastions of the witch elm. In terms of the future for witch elm, I don't feel it's a, a bleak story at all. I think there's been a tendency in the past to view elms as very much something of the past, a bit of a forgotten tree. But I think now time has gone by and we're seeing the potential for recovery and the witch elm is bouncing back. So my own view is that the witch elm's prospects are very good. <laughs>